This week on ANN, we hear a special holiday message from the president of Seventh-day Adventist World Church. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency, Impact Hope, and Maranatha volunteers share stories of how they are impacting the world around them. And we sat down with a representative from the White Estate to talk about how Adventists have historically celebrated Christmas. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us for our Christmas edition of ANN. This time of year tends to be pretty commercialized and busy. We can be easily distracted from the true essence of the season. While we know Jesus wasn't born during this time, the root of Christmas is the celebration of His birth. God sending His Son to ultimately die for our sins is the greatest expression of love. God's love compels us to serve and help others the way Jesus did when He lived on earth. He fed the hungry, healed the sick, and revealed God's character. Seventh-day Adventists are united in sharing Jesus' love with those around them. Today, we're going to highlight examples of captured by the Adventist Church around the world. It is our prayer that as you watch this episode of ANN and listen to the stories of service, the Holy Spirit will touch your heart and inspire you to serve the community or get involved in the projects we highlight. But first, we are going to hear a message from our World Church President, Ted Ansel Wilson, about what the season means to him. As we come to the close of another year, I'd like to invite you for a moment to consider the most amazing gift, Jesus Christ Himself. While we do not know exactly when He was born, the important thing is that we know for certain He was born and that He came to this earth on a very, very special mission. Foretold by prophecy and announced by a heavenly being more than 2,000 years ago, we read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Oh, what a wonderful gift from heaven itself. God himself, Emmanuel, came to dwell with us, to live and teach and heal and die. And Christ rose from the grave and is interceding for us in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary right now in preparation for his soon return. He did all of this to save us from our sins and to restore us to his likeness. Praise God, he lives and is coming back soon, this time to take us to live with him forever. Oh, what a day that will be, all made possible by the one who willingly humbled himself, was born in a manger and died on a cross to save you and me. Let's pause for a moment as we consider the profound words of the angel recorded in Luke chapter 2. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. May the joy of his birth, the peace of his presence, and the hope of his soon return fill your heart with the gift of his immeasurable love. May God bless each one of you in this coming new year. Maranatha. In Lebanon, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency runs the Adventist Learning Center. This center provides language and learning support, small class size, and individu individualized tutoring. Here is one story of a young girl whose life is being changed by this project. The world is a scary place. Everything is so big. The cars and buses speed down the road. Children laugh on their way to school. 
What if they laugh at me? I don't look like all the other children. I need help to walk, and I have to wear glasses. What if they are mean to me? I could stay home and learn by myself, but it's no fun to be alone. But my sister says we are never alone. She says that God is always with us. So maybe, maybe I will try to be brave. With God's help, maybe I can go to school too. I am still afraid. I trust that God will take care of me. And who knows? Maybe the other kids will be nice to me. Maybe they will even become my friends. Best of all, maybe they will see that I am a normal kid too. To find out more about this project and the other ADRA projects in this episode, please visit ADRA.org. Seventh day Adventists and other Christians around the world take this time of year to celebrate the gift of Christ's birth and what that means to us. There are some, however, who don't believe we should celebrate Christmas and that it is wrong to single out this time of year. Our producer, Jennifer Steinmeis, sat down with Dwayne Esmond of the LNG White Estate to talk about how Adventists have historically recognized the Christmas season. Thank you, Dwayne, for joining us sure. as we talk so, sort of through this Christmas season and mm -hmm. the holiday season. Mm -hmm. um, within Christendom or Adventism, uh, Christmas seems to be a little bit controversial. Can you, mm -hmm. Why is that? I think it's controversial because um, Christians know certain things about Jesus, about his contribution, about his love for us, his sacrifice for us, that God sent him. And I think Christmas as practiced currently because it's so commercial, yeah. it's so materialistic, you know, the minute Thanksgiving gets done, the, 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 the or commercials before. are on, or before, before, you know, the commercials are on, the music is playing, the, you know, uh, people are plying us to buy things. I think it, it has become so commercialized that it bothers many Christians mm -hmm. that Jesus is even caught up in this mix. Right. Ellen White, our, um, one of the co-founders of the Adventist Church, mm -hmm. um, she, had, she had opinions on Christmas. Yeah. And um, could did. you share some of those with us? Sure, Let's sure. Um, her counsel settled on certain things. One, she's very concerned about the, the change from a Christ-centered approach to one of amusement, gift giving, and the waste of resources. She's very concerned about that. So you'll see that that in her writing. She she counsels that that we should be sure that children in particular understand who Jesus is. So as we are coming into the Christmas season, the mm -hmm. holiday season, how can we find that balance? not just in, in our churches, how can we find that balance? Mm -hmm. For ourselves and our families, how can we, we find balance? I, you know, the Christmas season to me is an excellent opportunity um, to help our families and help others understand who Jesus is. So what if, you, what if in your family you said, you know, over this season we're gonna cover, just as a family, we're gonna do some family reading together. I think another thing that we should look at doing is how can my family, my church family, be a blessing to the community and to others? And I would say, I, if I can add one other thing that concerns me is, you know, this is one of the few times of the year when you can actually speak to a stranger about Jesus. Yeah. It's one of the, whatever you think about how the world is and how, how crazy Christ, uh, Christmas has become uh, or materialistic, consumeristic it is. Um, it's one of the few times that people are sensitized mm. to even hear a spiritual message. So I would say that overriding opportunity should not be lost because right. we have, you know, some strong conviction and we're just going to push people out or push ourselves away from people because of how we feel about the season. Use it as an opportunity. Use our common sense. If, if, if someone is willing to hear you, Please share the love of Jesus Christ with them in any way um, you can. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Dwayne, for joining yeah. us, and I hope you have a blessed holiday season with your family. Thank you. And I'm going to wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you. I appreciate, Thank you. It. Okay. I appreciate it. 
Adjust Thailand's Keep Girls Safe project works in collaboration with government agencies, local non-government organizations, and community groups to raise awareness and reduce the vulnerability of women and girls to sexual exploitation and human trafficking. The project provides education opportunities, a shelter for high-risk girls, plus youth clubs and community activities that provide awareness and knowledge of human trafficking issues. Address sent this report. คงไม่มีโอกาสค่ะที่จะได้เรียนต่อค่ะเพราะว่าทางบ้านก็ไม่ค่อยแบบมีเงินส่งลูกเรียนสักเท่าไหร่ค่ะ Keep Girls Safe provide a very safe environment for the girls. We also provide opportunities. We're not available; they will stay in the village. But when they come to us, they can have an education. They have a safe place. The stories of the girls in Keep Girls Safe are not. Unique. They are very common stories, and we keep hearing the same story when we visit some of the villages in the northern part of Thailand. We have to live in the house. 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 หนูมีความรู้แต่หนูอยากให้บุตรเรียนสูงๆไรนะให้มันเก่งแล้วก็ไม่เหมือนไม่เหมือนหนูเพราะว่าหนูนี่ลำบากลำบากมากหนูรู้สึกว่าที่นี่ช่วยหนูได้หลายอย่างทั้งเรื่องการเรียนทั้งเรื่องความเป็นอยู่สุขอนามัยแล้วก็ทางด้านเหมือนกับเป็นความสามารถพิเศษอะค่ะเพราะว่าในที่นี้เราอาจจะเกิดเป็นเด็กเรียนเกรดเอ็ดเกรดเก้าแต่เด็กๆจะเข้าถึงประมาณสิบสองปริญญาตรีหรือไม่ก็เราจะพยายามให้เด็กๆได้รับการเรียนประถมปริญญาตรีแต่ปัญหาของการเข้าถึงในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตในชีวิตของหนูในการสื่อสารกับคนต่างชาติแล้วก็อยากจะเรียนรู้ประเพณีของเขาด้วยค่ะหนูก็เลยคิดว่าถ้าหนูมาอยู่ที่นี่ตอนนี้หนูน่าจะมีโอกาสที่จะมีอนาคตค่ะที่สดใสค่ะ Coming up, Maranatha helps residents devastated by the campfire in Paradise, California. But up next, find out how Impact Hope is educating refugees in Rwanda. We may look Pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath, and we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. Welcome back. Impact Hope, a supporting ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, has a mission. That mission is to empower Adventist generational refugees in Rwanda for success in life by giving them upper secondary education and vocational skills training. Impact Hope has more. Rwanda has worked hard to recover from the brutal genocide against the Tutsi in 1994. But refugees continue to flood into Rwanda from neighboring Congo. Terrorists often threaten, beat, or kill adults and children as they attempt to escape the turmoil. After decades of war, many children are homeless and missing parents or siblings. And they say, no, it's a trick. You are not a soldier. You need to put my gun here. They say, no, you should be killed. And in that moment, I remember, I, I did not know how to pray. But in my heart, I just kneeled down, held it down, then I said, 
Oh please my god help me if I escape this place. I should save you all the time. I, my old brothers and sisters are still in Congo because when the war was broken out, uh, I, I separated with them. They, la they ran away where I don't know. Until now, I, I have never seen them. The number of people fleeing Congo in 2016 surpassed the number of refugees fleeing Syria in the same time period. Yet the world knows little of the current refugee crisis in Rwanda. Now the total number of people in camps is nearly 80,000. These refugees are trapped in desperate conditions in makeshift homes with no running water, sewer, or electricity. The refugees do not own land, so have no way to raise their own food or keep their own animals. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees provides enough for one meal per day per person. It is not a good place for human beings to live. To find something to eat, uh, something to trace, it is so hard. The refugees desperately want a way out of the camps, but lack opportunity. Relief organizations offer school in the camps until grade nine. Rwandan high schools are located in the cities, a long ways away from the camps. Often when returning from class, the students find nothing to eat since the family has already eaten the one meal provided. Then the students have to get up early and walk back to school on an empty stomach. Brave girls who walk as much as five miles one way risk assault or rape. It happens routinely. This, in this life that we love, if you are an educated people, you, can, you cannot get anything. When we found out that most of the people in the camps were Seventh-day Adventist, yet they had no hope to excel with an education or to get a job, we felt like we needed to do something. In 2015, the Tigerson started Impact Hope, an organization that sends at-risk refugee youth to safe Adventist boarding schools in Rwanda. This gives the teens a chance for a high school education and also a place to be empowered by hope. We feel passionate about helping these refugee students because we have been so impacted by them out of their dire situations, the hope and the Christ-centered life that they're living. By helping them, we have been incredibly blessed ourselves. For most of the graduating refugees, a high school diploma isn't enough to secure a job. In 2017, Impact Hope added a summer trade school program the summer program teaches permaculture, hairdressing, sewing, plumbing, and electrical. These practical trades equip students with a realistic way to make a living when they graduate, a way to finally break free from the refugee camps. Impact Hope is making a difference because all of our graduates so far have either received university scholarships for continuing education or they've received employment. In the first year of the trade program, 350 students attended the summer trade school program. Now, around 600 sponsored students are enrolling in the trade school. Still, more needs to be done. With a donation of $50 a month, we can immediately take a child out of a camp and place them in a safe, secure boarding school. A sponsor gives a young person an education and a vocational skill, plus safety and enough to eat and all that in an environment that will build relationships with Jesus and create a life of service to those around them. Yes. And there are even more students who need help. Each year, over 10,000 children from the refugee camps miss out on a high school education and the chance to learn a life-changing trade. Right now, the doors to Rwanda are open. But given their past, we know that those doors can shut. This is the time to do the work in Rwanda. There are other ways you can help too. You can volunteer, pray, and share with others how students in Rwanda's refugee camps find hope. Visit impact-hope.org to find out more. You can impact hope. For more information on how you can volunteer, visit Impact Hope at impact-hope.org. In November of 2018, the campfire devastated Paradise in the U.S. state of California, leaving much of the population homeless. 
The Paradise Seventh-day Adventist Church asked Maranatha Volunteers International to partner with them in building storage sheds for the people in need. Maranatha Volunteers sent this report. In November 2018, the Camp Fire devastated the entire town of Paradise, California, leaving most of the population homeless. A year later, 2,000 residents have moved back, less than 10% of Paradise's population before the fire. People are living on their properties in trailers or RVs with no place to safely store their belongings while they continue to recover from the disaster. The Paradise Seventh-day Adventist Church asked Maranatha Volunteers International to partner with them in building storage sheds for people in need. So in November, Maranatha mobilized 377 volunteers from all over the United States to build 200 10 by 12 foot sheds. With no hotels around, volunteers camped in classrooms and RVs at the Adventist school across the street. And because there is still limited electricity in town, the team brought in multiple generators to power kitchen stoves, saws, nail guns, and more. This is Terry Parsons' ninth Maranatha project. Her mission trips generally take her to a far off place, but this time the project is personal. Terry lost her home in the campfire, but she found God's blessing through the tragedy, and now she wants to give back and share God's love in her own community. I feel so blessed, and God kept blessing us through that, and so this is my ability to bless somebody else that didn't quite have that yet, that God is still working their pathway out. And so that's why I wanted to come to this mission trip and do this work. In just three weeks of intense activity, volunteers constructed 202 sheds, surpassing the initial goal. The volunteers celebrated by signing the interior of the last shed and offering a prayer of gratitude. To date, more than 700 people have applied to receive the sheds. Shed delivery started in mid-November and will continue through December, thanks to local organizations and individuals volunteering their time. This is so wonderful. I'm so pleased. Thank you all very much for this. This is just amazing. God bless you. To learn more about Maranatha's work around the world, visit Maranatha's website at maranatha.org. Coming up, we have the final this week in Adventist history of the year. But up next, Adra passes out backpacks in Mozambique. May I work in with you, young fella? Yeah. Go for it. That's the way you do it. Got to put a little weight on it. But I'll put it back up here for you. More than 50,000 students across Southern Africa are receiving much-needed school meals to encourage increased school enrollment and attendance thanks to the partnership project known as the El Nino Relief and Recovery School Feeding Initiative. The School Feeding Initiative focuses on primary age school children, often one of the most vulnerable populations during protracted drought when food resources are scarce. Amidst the region's worst drought in 35 years, ADRA joined forces with Rise Against Hunger and other nonprofits to help tackle the hunger crisis in 185 schools across Mozambique, Madagascar, Malawi, Zimbabwe, and Swaziland. Adra sent this report. In many parts of Africa, boys and girls don't always get enough food to eat. Some kids eat just one meal a day. Some don't get to eat anything. When 
children don't have very much food, it can be really hard to go to school. Maybe they are too weak to walk there. Maybe they have to stay home and help look for food. Maybe they are just too hungry to learn. Sometimes a little food makes a big difference. That's why ADRA gives hot lunches to kids in need. Because when there are full stomachs, there are full classrooms. Now kids are getting food for the belly and food for the brain. That's a pretty good reason to smile. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Michael Yonker for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about the special meaning of Christmas for the Adventist Church in West Africa. This week in Adventist history, we remember the birth of Christ, not 2,000 years ago, but in the hearts of those in West Africa. It was on what our calendar regards as Christmas Day, December 25, 1970, that the first black conference in all of Africa was organized during the 11th Constituency Meeting in Asakor Koforudua, with John Kenneth Amoa elected as president. Ever since that time, it has financed its own operations and has used its local workers to carry forward an enthusiastic and successful program of evangelism. The SDA work in West Africa originally began in 1888 when Francis Stolfigen, an African, discovered the truth of the Sabbath by reading literature sent to his town by the International Tract Society, which had been supplied by the captain of a ship which anchored in Apam, located in modern-day Ghana. Finding locals who resonated with the teachings the group he organized requested that the General Conference send missionaries. In the meantime, in 1892, Lawrence Chadwick, president of the International Track Society, spent several months with the group at Hapam, and in, at the January 1893 General Conference session, himself made a plea for more missionaries to be sent to the West Africa territory. In response, Edward Sanford and Carl Rudolph arrived at Hapam in February 1894, and the work continued from then onward. That's this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your feedback and tell us how your church is making a difference in its community. Be sure to capture plenty of video footage and photos, then write up a summary of the event's important details, and feel free to send full video reports as well. You can reach us by sending an email to annvideo11 at gmail.com. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The passage says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and that darkness has not overcome it. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.